Champs Championship match here from Eternal Weekend. One match of magic left. That's right, Shaman. Good start for Hans. And the turn two he's capable of, of like wasteland him. That seems Ooh. like that seems like the start. Yeah. And here we go. Seth Black does have Chalice on one. He has placed it onto the stack. Hans is calmly completing the shuffle from his fetch land. <laughs> Clearly has not acknowledged the Chalice. Let's see. Do we have a Force of Will? Do we have an Abrupt Decay? No. Mm, Chalice resolves. No Force of Will. Could mean he has Abrupt Decay and chose not to use the Force. Could mean he has no Force. All right. There's the Wasteland. Do we see wow. the him? Is this the him? No, Tarmogoyf. No, okay. All right, that's fine. Tarmogoyf not too big right now, but he will uh, eventually get bigger with some of the follow-up plays on probably either side. So eventually get into uh, the territory where we can tussle with uh, Reality Smasher. Land go. Yeah. Herborg not exactly a land that showcases uh, the strength of Seth's hand. Mm -hmm. I can't really tell if he has any others in his hand. Deathrite gives his life for the Tarmogoyf. Yeah. So does Ponder. <laughs> Chalice 1 doing work, but... <laughs> one mana, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on yeah. all Tarmogoyfs. I think uh, sure. they both act as like a, a battle growth. I think a, a Mirrodin card, plus 1, plus 1 permanently. <laughs> now we got an instant 2, Fatal Push. He just spent that turn dropping three 1 mana spells into his graveyard <laughs> and getting this Tarmogoyf fired up. What a hilarious turn. Yeah, two of those uh, having some play as uh, death rate fuel in uh, some of the upcoming turns as well. Here's Jitte, but no creature from Seth. Like, you know what I love about this from Han's perspective? Just the confidence. <laughs> it's like, yep, turn one chalice. Yep, here's what I'm doing. Didn't even think that long about it. Just no. like feed this to the chalice, feed this to the chalice, feed this to the chalice. That, that, that is an is, amazing insight. This is what we pay you the big bucks for, Tarmogoyf. <laughs> this is your game to win for me. Yeah, Seth is representing four mana for Eldrazi casting. Uh, no follow-up colorless source to actually uh, pay for the colorless mana symbol. Yeah, I think the Wasteland on an Ancient Tomb did some real work here. Yeah. Uh, now there's City of Traders, so everything is on. Yeah, maybe even multiple things. Could play Smasher, could play Matter Reshaper and something else. Oh, there's a Thought Knots here. Oh, he could go double Thought Knots here, here. So one mana short of double thought knot. Well, oh he can no, tap he, the you're eye. right. He can tap the eye for black. Sorry. Yeah. You're right. He can go double thought knot. Days. Oh, come on. Tap the <laughs> eye for black. The Urborg beats this days. That one mana can only be spent on. Uh, no. The one mana can just be spent. Yeah, he doesn't have a, a tempo this time. So this days is just. It's a tempo days. A tempo days. Yeah, he won't be able to get out second thought knots here, but the first one is. Uh, Still pretty rough anyway. And I guess he figures that the Thought Knots here is going to take his days, so he may as well cause issues mm -hmm. before he gets it exiled anyway. Yeah, Yeah, because now this hand is a land and a one-mana spell. So Nice play by Hans. Again, complete confidence. Just mm -hmm. quick, crisp decision-making. Awkward plays, but correct plays. Right. And, I mean, when you can make the awkward but correct play quickly, it's a, it's a sign <laughs> that you're playing good magic. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love the fact that we have this co level of confidence at this final table. The Thought Knots here, though, is outclassed by Tarmogoyf. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jitte is going to throw the math off next turn. But that's also down to eight. Yeah. I mean, from the looks of it right now, the... Uh, the death right can one two punch. Uh, Indeed. So it really is on the Jitte to uh, get him out of this pickle. And that's not really what he wants to spend his mana on. No. Is Hans really going to pull this game off? Through Chalice on one? <laughs> I mean, it's all. It's Tarmogoyf MVP, obviously, if he does pull it off, but. Three one mana spells fed to the Chalice, a daze that he knew his opponent could pay for. But he might. It's, it's, oh, it's so close. 
Yeah. Does equip. Yeah, but he can't afford to leave it on defense because he'll just die to the death right shaman. Right? Activate, untap, activate. Right. So he's he has to do more. He's obliged, I believe, to attack and therefore have the ability to gain life. But then he also has to block Tarmogoyf. So I think I saw Reality Smasher in his hand. Yeah, that would be a, be a pretty good one against the Goyf in this situation. It's funny. It's Reality Smasher on D. <laughs> I mean, I think this is going to be post-combat Reality Smasher yeah. go. Yeah, post-combat on purpose. Don't see that too often. Han's thinking here. Yeah, you just take it. Now there's Jitte. Could kill Deathrite. Could hold on to some life gain. Definitely has to play something that can block a Tarmogoyf. And Reality Smasher blocks it very well. Seth also uh, showing a bit of mastery. The Mistress Factory could have uh, been a uh, pretty good uh, blocker in that situation as well if for some reason the Jitte didn't connect. But, uh, Interesting. Hans, Hans chose not to activate his Deathrite. Oh, that yeah. end step. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, all the types are relevant for Tarmogoyf. So there's definitely cost. If you're not killing your opponent, you're shrinking your Tarmogoyf has. He yeah, did eat the days already, so. It, only one more instant, only one more sorcery in there. Hmm. So now the 4 fives on defense. <laughs> it's very... The Jitte counters, though. It seems like Seth's got to have a really good attack here. Thought not is going to take a peek. See fetch land, so... Game is being played with the stuff that's on the board. You can use that ancient tomb to tap for black and maybe use the reality smasher with the Jitte. No. Seems like a good attack. That's nine. He just takes it. Tarmogoyf has no good blocks with those Jitte counters available to, to shrink it. Mm-hmm. So he just takes nine. Now it's four counters. Is it time to kill Deathrite? Uh, he kill taps. I think that was black, black. Yeah. Yep. And now Jitte goes on to the creature that's available to block. Yeah. I think, I do think you leave the counters in Jitte. Uh, Deathrite can only do uh, two damage per turn. And uh, yeah. Wow. Pack that was a up. really well played game by both players. Yeah, absolutely. I thought that was just a fine game of magic. Mm -hmm. Edge Eldrazi. As Eldrazi. Eldrazi's like, yep, you fed me another Delver deck. I'm now 4-1 on the draw Whew. against against these Delver decks. Okay. I love the way Hans played it, though. I mean, yep. I, obviously he lost. and I mean, Chalice 1 was a gigantic problem, but mm -hmm. he came damn close to pulling that off through the Chalice 1. Yeah, that was masterful. Yeah, 4-5 Tarmogoy, very relevant there. Um, almost, almost sealed it up. It really took that Jitte to uh, gain that little extra life to uh, make Death Right not lethal. And yeah. If it was uh, any different, it might have gone completely differently that first game. So we're one game away from Ancient Tomb winning both uh, both events? <laughs> Ancient Tomb, Wasteland, Chalice. Is that what they overlap by? Uh, I mean, because it's yeah. kind of two different monocolor aggro decks. It really is. But they don't overlap by much more than that, do they? No, I, I don't think, think that's so. It. There's Ratchet Bomb on the sideboard of Seth Black's deck as well. So. Sure, Ratchet Bomb on the sideboard. <laughs> that's, that's, that was the key. That was the key. Ancient Tomb... Ancient Tomb, Mishra's Factory. Mishra's Factory. There were Ancient four. Ancient Tomb, Mishra, Wasteland, Chalice, and then uh, Ratchet Bomb on the sideboard. That was the yeah. recipe for Eternal Weekend. Remember <laughs> that next year. Yeah. Apparently, those are the key ingredients. Yeah. I mean, all very very good choices. I mean, Chalice of the Void. Basically, uh, one, uh, one of the interesting uh, plays that I saw this weekend, uh, saw Chalice of the Void on two after a... Uh, Workshop player had got to copy Gristlebrand and draw 14 cards of their own. Chalice yep. of the Void, uh, if it had been any other card in that situation, would he would have lost that game. Yeah, that's how Richie got to the finals. Yeah. Semifinals was a against Oath. He was yeah. able to metamorph the Grizzlebrand, draw 14, <laughs> but then he had to make sure that his metamorph didn't get killed or Grizzlebrand would have just attacked for the win. So. Right. Chalice on two. <laughs> Chalice on two. It all. And Grafter Grits, like, there was, a, there was an ancient grudge in the, uh, in the graveyard yeah. at that point. Grafter Grits Cage did come in, but uh, wasn't, uh, it was good that he got the Chalice on two because his opponent would have ended up uh, drawing a Hercules recall. Yeah, top card was Hercules. Yeah, so that was, that was probably my favorite match of the, uh, 
of the vintage. Hopefully, that was we'll insane. I'm like the shop deck never gets to draw cards. Right, exactly. that's the drawback of playing a shop deck. You only get to draw one card a turn. Mm -hmm. People want to draw multiple cards. They got to go to things like Uba Mask and <laughs> you know bizarre Baghdad shenanigans. Yeah. Bottle Cloister. Nope. How about we just play Frexy Metamorph and then draw 14? Yeah. Seems a little bit easier. Also have a 7-7 seven, seven lifelinker. <laughs> that worked out. All right. Does sideboarding change this much, do you think? Um, no. I, th I mean, we've seen it's business as usual for uh, Seth. I think we still s we see the same cards. Uh, the All is Dust probably coming in to kind of clear the board one side of Wrath. Um, I don't know if we uh, really saw anything else out of that uh, in any of the other two matches. So his deck is designed to be uh, to deal with the Delver decks um, as is mm -hmm. for the most part. How about on your side? Um, I like. Where is it? Oh, Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize. I think so, especially on the play. Okay. Like just the ability to take a giant monster out of his hand. One of the drawbacks to the Eldrazi deck, I mean, almost similar to the, the Workshop deck in Vintage. Mm -hmm. You don't draw extra cards. Right. You're like, all right, I need to draw a ton of mana. I need to draw enough fast mana that I can quickly start deploying four and five mana threats. Mm -hmm. But then I also need to draw enough four and five mana threats to sort of exalt, run my opponent out of removal. So you kind of mm -hmm. need to draw the right mix of stuff. And it's really easy to get a mana-heavy hand with like one, maybe two threats. Mm. And I mean, thought he's spectacular in a situation okay. like that. I do like the sound of that. And thought he's on the play can also grab the chalice. Yeah, yeah, a little proactive chalice would have done. I mean, yeah, despite the fact that he played all those cards to for that Tarmogoyf uh, game plan, if he had access to actually casting those spells, yeah, yeah. So uh, one more, more abrupt decay, of course, was yeah. going to come in. Toxic deluge. I don't think so. Probably too low on life at that you're point. You're going to pay so much life. When you're going <laughs> to kill a Reality Smasher, you're going to take five and then be able to pay five. I just, I don't think you're winning that game. I think you've got to fight Reality Smasher with Force of Will. Okay. Days. One of Dismember. Maybe you bring the Dismember in. That's reasonable. Okay. Yeah. It's better removal than Fatal, fatal Push. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Especially against the Smasher. Kim's and and the Endbringer. Oh, looks like uh, we're underway. All right. Game two. Can Seth Black just keep crushing Delver? Well, it's not a chalice. It is a sorcerer's spyglass <laughs> off Ancient Tomb. Got to read that one. Brand new card from Ixalan. Uh, kind of acts as a uh, pithing needle, but with the added text of looking at your opponent's hand before you choose the card. Also, you can name lands. Yeah. Thanks. So, oh, that's uh, versus Revoker. Pithing Needle lets yep. you name lands, too. So yep. you're right. It's a Pithing Needle, not a Revoker. Uh -huh. um, but you do get to look at your opponent's hand. Interestingly, um, while it doesn't shut off mana abilities, it does shut off... It does let you name lands. So you see Hans here, before the card resolves, is going to go ahead and crack his Misty Rainforest. <laughs> He's not going to let that be a two-mana Stone Rain. There you go. Uh, interesting. Uh, the judge says that... Uh, for, before this game, Hans asked, uh, please be a little nicer to me. <laughs> and Seth responded with, I make no promises. Perfect. Oh, even more responses to this spyglass. Brainstorm. I'm not going to show you all the information. I'm going <laughs> to hide the good stuff. Wow, there was another Misty. <laughs> spyglass naming Misty could have been insane. <laughs> Hans, Hans knew what was up. Yeah. He's been playing well. He wasn't going to make that mistake. Yeah, you know a little bit about... Uh, Having two of your fetch lands, uh, stores for Spyglass. <laughs> yeah. Happened to be in Vintage Super League. The existence of this card does mean that if you don't have basic lands that you need to get with your fetch lands, you should spread them out. Mm -hmm. Right. You're, if all, you know, you're just mono island based dual lands, you know, two right. Misty, two Tarns, two of everything rather than four ofs. All right, what do we got? Two Death days. Days, Force of Will. That's Dismember, right? Mm -hmm. What's the first card in the bottom left? Bottom left, I'm not, uh, Life from the Loam? Is that what that is? Not the card I was expecting to see, but there is a, there's a one of in his sideboard. Brings in Life from the Loam here? I guess, I mean, Wastelanding, uh, a deck that has no unwastelandable spells or uh, lands. Yeah, that's a... 
I mean, dredging fattens up your tarmogoyfs, I guess. <laughs> that's, I mean, it that's does stuff. It just doesn't do, do things quickly. No. Spyglass named Wasteland, by the way, which is uh, a very nice name here. Kind of counters the whole life from the loan plan. Yeah. All right. Hans's turn two was very quick. It was just Misty Go. Oh, Cavern. Misty Death Right Go. Sorry. Cavern of Souls. Here's Matter issue. Yeah, making the uh, Force to Will and Double Days that he saw in Hans's hand kind of look silly. True story. Yeah, Cavern's so good. I'm usually on the blue deck side of it. Cavern's so unfair. <laughs> Just a very good card. I've seen you throw Merfolk around every once in a while, though. Yeah, that's fair. I said usually on the blue usually. side. Usually, okay. Also, that is the blue side. <laughs> <laughs> Cavern or not, yeah. Still casting Force of Will. Yeah, here's life mm -hmm. from the loam. Fetch land, fetch land. Yeah. Solid value play. Yeah, develop that mana. <laughs> so that was crack fetch land. Response, death right, exiling the fetch land to get the mana so that he can brainstorm before the fetch land resolves. He wants to get off the brainstorm and then shuffle. Wow. Hans just got all the timing worked out in this deck. He's playing wow. it very well. Yeah, that fetch, was. Fetch, hold priority, brainstorm. Yeah, that was really, yeah. Yeah, he has, he has really showcased mastery with some of these, some of these lines. Right number two. I mean, lots of subtle little value stuff going on on Hans's side, but the other side has giant robot monsters. Yes. Or does it? We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find. It looks like he has uh, plenty of ways to get to five mana this turn. Yeah. Yeah, I see the eye. Caverns, his stuff's uncounterable. Or at least one stuff's. Here is Thought Knots here. Yeah. So looking at that Force of Will and uh, two dazes that just can't do anything due to the cavern. Is that a yeah, fatal push in the middle? Yes. yes. And that's the card he takes. So he can still kill the uh, Thought Knots here with uh, Dismember. It's made it a little more painful for him. Or more expensive. Yeah. More mana intensively painful. <laughs> Thinking through, Hans is uh, choosing to pay one, uh, two life. Mm -hmm. Draws another days. <laughs> yeah, and the two death rights get in there. You got more big robot monster, Seth. <laughs> I have Ugin. Got something at the front there. Kind of looks like a, an endless one. It's a pretty big monster. Matter reshaper chips away. Players have been whittling each other down at about the same pace so far. Yeah. Yeah. Seth Black's uh, ancient tomb in conjunction with the uh, Deathrite shamans. Uh, they're they're roughly even. Interesting. Goes for a five five endless one. Does not tap his ancient tomb. Hmm.
Could have been 7-7. Seven, seven. But those two life looked relevant. Yeah. Yeah. A new fatal push. <laughs> yeah, the reason he took the fatal push with the uh, Thought Nuts here is that obviously, sure, Endless One may have cost five, but CMC Zero when it's in play. Hans has access to so many uh, instances in his graveyard at this point that he could potentially have a three-turn clock with the Death Rite Shamans. He might be able to dredge it into more. I mean, he's super close to killing him next turn. All right, four damage during Seth's end step, untapped six damage. Yeah. There are five available. Umasabas Jete is here once again. Yeah, we saw that break open the other game. Force of Will. Yep. yep. The first thing that hasn't been <laughs> cast using Cavern. So Seth knew about the Force of Will, was expecting that, but it was time to slog through the Force of Will. Now what? It just says go. All right. Here's four damage. Be it seven. Shift the turn. So you can easily block the uh, reality smash with one of the death rates and... Uh Still provide lethal once uh, he gets to Hans's upkeep. Well, he needs another. He needs food. Does need food? No, no he does never, have no, food. He okay, he, there's enough food. There's still four. Okay. Wow, that was. I thought he was out. <laughs> I thought he only had three, but. It's like he heard us at that very moment and made sure we knew. So Hans Jacob Goda looks very likely to force game three. How does Seth either has to deal five damage this turn, or somehow gain life, or somehow kill? Multiple death right shamans. I don't know that he can do any of those things. No, really? He really has a, a mana heavy hand there. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like three lands. Mistress Factory, but I don't think combat's really what he's thinking about. <laughs> Man, Han's down to two. Every little point has mattered. Wow. Seth now down to one. And kill you. On to game three. Wow. Triple death right shaman dealt <laughs> most of the damage there. Ancient tomb dealt the rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really seeing that unfortunately there is a, a real detriment to these uh, soul lands just because they can produce uh, the two mana. It uh, it has that drawback in ancient tomb. So it's just kind of uh, sealed the deal there. Yeah, if uh, that Omizawa's GTA that one turn had uh, gotten down, I think we would have had a different match. But Force oh, yeah. of Will finally getting a chance to uh, shine after sitting in Hans's hand for so long. Hmm. Now the Eldrazi deck gets to be on the play. <laughs> <laughs> He's played... Seven games in this top eight so far. Mm -hmm. And he's only been on the play for one of them. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> haven't really gotten to see what uh, what happens in that case. We see uh, Hans. It looks like he's uh, reconfiguring his deck yeah. uh, to be on the uh, draw this time. I think he shuffled his whole sideboard in. Okay. That's smart. No free information for you, <laughs> Seth Black. I approve of that strategy, although sometimes it can be frustrating when I'm trying <laughs> to remember that 15th like, what card. Is, oh, right. I had a land in my sideboard. I gotta find, <laughs> gotta find that. Yeah. Where's the stupid island? Yeah. So this is this is it. This is the last game. Last game that we're going to uh, see this weekend. True story. I mean, it's it's finally setting in. <laughs> <laughs> Already crowned one champion. Mm -hmm. Andrew Markton was victorious in vintage. Did you listen to that interview at all? I did. He. Uh, <laughs> I, I love the part where he was explaining 
He really he's a vintage only player. Right. And he really got serious into it when once vintage became available on Magic Online. Mm -hmm. But it was watching this broadcast, Eternal <laughs> Weekend four years ago, where he said, You know what? Let's do it. I'm gonna get paper cards. I'm going to Eternal <laughs> Weekend next year. Mm -hmm. And he's just this is the third year he's come since he was home watching this broadcast and made the decision, I'm gonna put a paper collection together so I can go play that tournament. Wow. Yeah. First, came with the first year, second year he made top eight, third year he won it. <laughs> Just kept improving on his record. Yeah, that that is a great. It was a great interview. Um, Andy, yeah, he was a little emotional. Uh, he he has a lot of passion behind it. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he. Um, and very much a dream come true, right? You listen yeah. to that story, and it's like he set himself a goal four years ago, mm -hmm. and actually pulled it off. Yeah, he did. He did the work. A lot of uh, this goal setting and. Figuring out uh, what you, where you want to get. You, you put your eyes on your prize. You know the work that you have to put in. And he put in the work. I mean, you see him on Magic Online all the time yep. practicing. And he was able to uh, turn that into a championship win. So... Soon we will have one of these gentlemen in the uh, in the booth, probably the uh, <laughs> the Savannah uh, painting in the booth as well. All right, one game. Good luck, guys. Let's just get a good game. Yeah. Seth Black's like, yeah, good games involve Turtle and Chalice. Those are the <laughs> good games. I saw the Chalice. Yeah, I see the Ancient Tomb. Here we go. You got an answer, Hans? Looks like he's... Nope. Not no yet. Force of Will. Just a wasteland for the Ancient Tomb. Sure. Seth yeah. plays a waste of his own. Looked to be his uh, last land in hand. So. Oh, is that right? Yeah. That's interesting. Huh. Oof. So he got the exact disruption that he wanted, but yeah. no f no real follow-up thanks to that wasteland. Yeah, you totally keep that. Yeah, absolutely. Ancient Tomb, Chalice, Wasteland. I don't care what the other four <laughs> cards are. Keep them if they're all lands. Keep them if they're all spells. Yeah. I guess if they're all lands, you need one. Of, probably really want one of them to be an eye. <laughs> I or factory. All right. But here's two mana. Sylvan Library is here. Okay. Still no land for Seth Black. He finally gets to be on the play. He gets turn one chalice on the play. Is he going to lose to that wasteland? Looking at his hand, it kind of looks like he has an endless one in his hand. Is there any reason? At, uh, or I guess it doesn't matter now with the Tarmogoyf, but uh, I'm just curious about having the endless one-on-one -on -one for at least a little bit of a... Uh, well, a, it gets countered by Chalice. Oh, you know what? <laughs> B, Sorry. I don't think it would be worth it anyway. Okay, that's fair. That's that's my mistake. <laughs> Days on Dismember. Ooh. Yikes. <laughs> and here's another. And there's a Force of Will! Oh. Wow. Day's your first dismember. Force of Will, your second dismember. Now my Tarmogoy's up to 2 3. The clock's been sped up. You've but. done nothing, so he's not paying life to the Sylvan. Content with the one card. Him to Turok! <laughs> Why not? Get some now creatures. Now there's going to be sorceries in the yard. And let's see what else. It's creature. Reality Smasher and Sorcerer Spyglass. So Artifact Creature. Tarmogoyf is four now, I think. Five with Sorcery. Mm -hmm. Two-turn clock. Land Instant Creature Sorcery.
artifact. 5-6. Unbelievable. Tarmogoyf was, became a two-turn clock thanks to all those dismembers. Eldrazi <laughs> Mimic is here to block. <laughs> I'm not out of this yet. Yeah, we said Sultai Delver might be better because Abrupt Decay could hit Chalice, but the real reason Sultai Delver has been better has been Tarmogoyf. Yes. Tarmogoyf has earned his paycheck. <laughs> Legacy Championships. Sure looks like it's headed Hans Jacob Goding's way. Three fresh cards. Remove Man. the Mimic. That'll do it. Dismember wow. clears the path. Tarmogoyf kills Seth Black. Hans Godic. Sultai Delver is your champion. Sultai Delver. Two to one. Eldrazi took out one flavor of Delver. It took out another flavor of Delver. It <laughs> took game one on the draw. Could not close. And